Welcome back to another rebuild here on Mata 24, and today we're going to be taking on the Carolina Panthers. I know recently we did a quote-unquote Carolina Panthers rebuild, but it was a fantasy draft challenge rebuild, which was still very good. It was a challenge where we had to draft the position of the player that was just taken before us in the fantasy draft, and obviously it was pretty challenging, a lot of repeat positions and a lot of positions, but we just didn't want a lot of non-best available type player positions, and it was a fun one, but... Some of you guys were commenting saying, when's the real Panthers rebuild coming out? And that was a good question. It is here. It is now. Now, this is a team that obviously just fired Frank Reich, the uh, head coach. Seems a bit harsh, you know? Brand new rookie quarterback with not a whole lot of talent around them. Uh, I don't know if they're just looking at Houston and like, we want that. Uh, we will order one of those and it'll be here in three to five business days, you know, it's even with Prime, it's a little slow because of all the Black Friday shopping, but we want that. Send that to us, and it didn't quite happen. Obviously, their ranks, their uh, individual performances really aren't great, but in general, the talent going into the season, we kind of knew that, right? It wasn't going to be great. They lost their best wide receiver in DJ Moore to get Bryce Young. They lost draft capital, and I mean, they just weren't a really good team to start with. O-line, you have Aquana, who you're hoping is that all-pro type. He's He's been okay. Moten's always been an average to above-average lineman. The rest, you probably need to rebuild completely. Tight end, I mean, Hayden Hurst is, once again, one of those bandage tight ends where it's like, you don't expect him to be in the top five uh, numbers, but he'll get the job done. Receivers, Adam Thielen, you know, proven he's still got a bit uh, left in the tank, but overall, they don't really have, like, a dynamic wide receiver, like, Yes, Thielen's good, but is he really a true number one? Eh, probably not at this point in his career. Miles Sanders has been pretty much a bust at this point. Bryce Young, I just can't judge. I can't. It's the hardest position in football, and his supporting cal, you know, cast and talent is just not there right now. And then defensively, you're not really seeing much better, right? Uh, Shaq Thompson's been injured for a while. I don't know the team that that well to know exactly where Luvu is playing, but the fact that he was starting at middle linebacker makes me wonder if they were pulling a Green Bay Packers back when the Packers inside linebackers were just injured left and right, and Clay Matthews basically played inside linebacker all season long. That man had a crazy year to deal with. It wasn't even that bad as an off-ball, but he was moving around so much, so much running in that season. I mean, it would not surprise me if that season alone was like, you know, it took like two years off of his NFL career. Like he was, He was overworked so hard. But Luvu was listed at inside linebacker, and uh, I mean, if I'm to understand correctly, he is actually more of an edge rusher, but maybe I'm wrong. Shaq Thompson, I mean, he's not really even supposed to start, but we're forced losing games anyway, so I don't know if it really matters. I'm going to actually check. Did he get season-ended? Uh, but Brian Burns, he's been pretty good. You know, it's been some on and off about, like, is he our guy? Is he not our guy? At this point, you got to take the risk. Like, you, what are you saving any money for anyways? You don't really have that much talent and Edge is obviously, you know, right up there with quarterback almost. You know, franchise tackle, quarterback, maybe wide receiver one as, you know, top cornerstone type need pieces. Burns has showed just enough over the years to be like, okay, we got to just pay him, dude. We just have to pay him. Safeties, I mean, on paper, the names are good, but, you know, not the best. And the corners are kind of disappointing when, you know, once upon a time you were thinking, okay, these guys are actually pretty good. Each of them could be number ones, but some injury concerns and, you know, just lack of the next step. Uh, is this listed as a 3-4? I don't know if it is or not, but we'll we'll fix it if it's not. It looks like a 4-3. Uh, Derek Brown, you know, he's part of that DT or interior bo uh, boom, if you will. You know, the Dexter Lawrences, the Quentin Williams, you know, those guys that just took an extra step after a year or two in the league. Uh, and then the rest, I mean, you just kind of need to replace. But as far as a Madden standpoint goes, uh, I don't know. Maybe Luvu can stick around. I think he's like, uh, his pass rush ability is like in the 80s. 80 finesse, 80 block shed. We'll see. He's probably going to be a lot, and he usually does hit free agency. Uh, strong safety. J and Jeremy Chin will probably be a starter for the long term. Corners, I think they paid Dante Jackson, if I'm not mistaken. So corners are set for the long term. Derek Brown will be set. We'll have to obviously pay him. Linebackers, though, outside of that, probably need to be fixed. The interior needs to be fixed. Uh, three linemen minimum. A new tight end wouldn't hurt. Wide receiver or two. And possibly, probably running back will be all things we'll have to change, all without our own first round pick, which is projected to be top five. And hold up, what? I changed the name of the coach. Okay, well, I mean, I guess you get to see the live firing of him. You're an outstanding motivator. W was he? 
one in ten, really? But anyways, we've done a bunch of teams, and I might throw a couple more like fantasy style rebuilds in there. But if there's a team I haven't done yet, and you guys want to see it rebuilt in any really fashion, a fantasy challenge rebuild, a uh, realistic rebuild, a fantasy style rebuild, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, you know, I just kind of choose random teams for the fantasy draft rebuilds. I try to choose teams that kind of don't have many draft picks or, you know, are in kind of tougher divisions. But sometimes I just go with a team that I like and uh, it just happens. But while you're also down there, maybe leave a like on the video if you end up enjoying it. And if you're new, maybe subscribe. We do a ton of franchise stuff. Have two franchise series running right now, a bunch of rebuilds, a couple of experiments here and there. And, uh, you know, at some point we will have our uh, our relocation franchise might not be a fantasy draft this time around. I'm trying to think about how I want to do this. I want to add a different twist if I can. But, uh, you know, it's it's Madden after all. You're, you're kind of limited to some things, right? Okay, so uh, I'm not going to be clicking this. Uh, I said show flashes. He showed asses. 35 to 0. I'm just curious to see what they're going to say. He's like, it was okay. It's like, was he? Zero points? Kind of trash. I uh, didn't get the win. and bro I guess, to be fair, I probably should have kept Frank. And then fired him later. I don't know. Let's be honest. It don't matter. This year is a complete bust. No first round pick. Panthers fans are probably absolutely lost. And uh, it is what it is. Just things happen. And hold up. We've got a 35 to 0 victory. Is Bryce Young is not really having a good rookie year. About to be an X factor. I mean, I'd take it. I'd take it. That'd be a crazy time. Oh. Just think of the crazy timing. Like, up to this point, the Panthers have obviously only won one game on the season, and the breakout comes right as we know that the win is going to be had. It was almost like a freebie breakout. I mean, technically, kind of. And instead, it's just a waste. <laughs> Which is a straight-up L. What is with 35-0? to zero? Let's see how screwed this team is. Uh, you know, they seem to lose a lot of their players to free agency. You usually don't see Burns, you sometimes see Chin, and then you see Luvu a lot, and I can see why, although now he's listed an inside linebacker. Maybe the IRL Panthers are trying to, to pull the cheese aru Fifth-year option from JC, you probably just re-sign him. Although I gotta say, the injury concerns are there. Brian Burns, don't know what's gonna cost us, but obviously we need to get it done. And, I mean, nowadays this is pretty low money. I mean, I kind of went higher than I was expecting I was going to have to, but... It is what it is. Jeremy Chin's been a little iffy for progressing for me, but the value's there, the money's there, why not? So this team is pretty broke. You know, we got a rookie quarterback contract, yet here we are with like 31 mil and like no talent. Like who is being paid so much and why are they still here? All right, I mean, I'm not really salty, so... Okay, we win a couple of games near the end. I'm not really salty. I really don't care about, you know, oh, we gave the, you know, the Bears such a good draft pick. It doesn't matter, right? The team should want to do what is best for itself. And obviously, winning four games out of the last five is not the best way to go about things when you're trying to get better draft picks. But, I mean, it gives the fans something to root for. What can I really complain about other than the fact that they're ruining my draft picks? Of course, the running game should be decent, and it's not. It's just not. Uh, Thielen was pretty good. Mingo was okay. Chark was pretty good. Hurst was decent. I could have sworn the Panther scheme was better than this. I don't know if it's just because Miles Sanders is a low overall, but he's not really playing well. Shaq Thompson could go to Superstar, which would be clutch. A little unfair, though, considering... Wow, these numbers are terrible. Going to have to make a change at uh, at least defense early on for the scheme. Uh, you know, I usually go Pittsburgh. It seems to be, like, kind of the only one that does well. But obviously, the numbers are pretty terrible here. It's, it's just not really much to that. You can see it for yourself, and... You don't really need to look too hard. Obviously, looking at some of the award wins, doesn't matter because we're not there. Maybe some Pro Bowl closeness appearances. I have no idea. Uh, you know, maybe Shaq Thompson, but even he probably shouldn't have that because of the injury. You know, he's is he actually? Let me. I'm gonna look it up. Okay, yeah. So him starting alone was already basically cheating. So uh, I'm gonna have to take away his dev up. Sadly, if he gets one, I don't know if he will. But you know, the uh, the tackles are pretty high, so I kind of figured he would. The Niners, winning by four over the Bengals. Uh, DevOps on offense do not exist, not even for Thielen. And then defensively, uh, Thompson doesn't go up in Dev, and Horn does. But once again, is he even allowed to be playing? Yeah, I mean, he hasn't played since September. So once again, just him getting some overalls up is already more than he should have gotten because he played 
So I'm going to have to take away the dev up because obviously he's just, he's just not playing. I mean, there's just no chance that in real life he puts up whatever number he just put up because, well, he's just not playing. Like I said, injuries have just become a really big problem for him and and uh, he's been out since September, early September. So what can you really do about that? Woods, I don't know if he's injured. What's the story there? But I don't really care too much because I'm going to be honest with you. He's a guy that I'm looking to replace at some point, whether it's right away or not. I don't know, but you know he's not going to be a long-term guy, in my opinion. Uh, at least I don't project him to be. We've got some re-signings. I think we took care of what we needed to. Luvu was just too much. I, I just don't think he's worth it. And as we've seen, even Brian Burns was bad. So what are, what are the chances Luvu is ever going to be good for us? Horny's a, a contract, but I think you wait. Fifth-year option makes more sense in real life, but in-game, we could probably get him for cheaper by just waiting. Luvu did go up in dev. He's an 83 overall. What's that finesse? If it's not a, like, 82 plus, it's 82. <laughs> I mean, I'd be willing to do a one-year, like, 17. That's that's really my uh, my bottom dollar here. And his tag is... It's 19 mil. We have a lot of needs. I mean, if I can keep a pretty good edge rusher another season without having to actually address the position... I mean, I kind of think that's a good idea. I, do, I really do. If we have another bad season, we can draft a a guy higher because we'll have our own first round, I believe. So that makes a little more sense, in my opinion. $20 million left, but we might have more with some like releasings or some tradings. So we will look at this free agency period and see if there's anyone worth grabbing. Patrick Queen would be great. You know, some injury concerns at our inside linebacker position and just not a lot of talent there. Safety's a concern, but Geno Stone's a little on the slower side. And it's a lot of offers for him, about ten mil per so Patrick Queen would be on my uh, radar. Jordan Brooks, his block shed and his zone coverage and all that, just not really great. Receivers, I mean, it's all bandage players. I think you're probably better off drafting a proven one. Thielen may have even retired. Uh, running back, I definitely want a new one. I don't see a name here, though, that really has longevity for us. Cam Akers, I mean, he's kind of bounced around a bit. He's not bad, and I'd say he's probably better than anyone we got. He's a little more athletic than... Than some, but at this point, he's like, you know, just a slightly younger Miles Sanders. I don't know. We'll have to look into some of these. Keaton Mitchell, he's pretty fast. Maybe he's worth, the, you know, investing in and developing. What's his juke ability and all that? It's actually not bad. It's actually 74 overall is a bit low, but he's not terrible. All right, so far we have two offers. Patrick Queen, it's kind of a costly one. And then uh, Keaton Mitchell, which is not a costly one. Don't know if we're going to get any of them. And we don't get Queen. I offered him a five-year 65, which is definitely up there. And then he ended up accepting a five-year, the hell even is that, 42? Five-year 42 versus a five-year 65. And it's not even like he joined like a Super Bowl contender. The Commanders, I mean, maybe, but I mean, it's not like they're surefire, right? So another re unrealistic EA simming, which we just love around here. Of course, we have so little money, you would just have to assume somebody costly is about to be a free agent. Like, what is going on here? Dead hits? I, I don't know. Like, where actually is the damn money? So, Moten got paid. Bryce, obviously, on the rookie contract. I mean, these contracts seem kind of low. I guess Sanders was a somewhat big contract. I'm not really sure what, I guess, Tuttle. There's a, there's a couple of expensive ones in here, but it just feels like... I don't know, Bozeman's not a great contract either. It just feels like we're screwed. I don't know. I just feel like we have so many really bad contracts and we're broke even though we have no talent. The Bears, it looks like, I, I doubt our five win season was good enough to get them pick one overall, but they're still at pick seven from the Panthers. Pick one overall is, okay, a running back. Obviously, I have a couple of players that, you know, would have been first round players, but... Our draft picks are kind of low, so I am not going to be trading up in the first round. Hell, I'll probably be trading down. You guys know the gist by now. A couple of decent running backs. I think Perriman or Pierman is probably the best bet, but Curse is pretty cool too because he's a little bit more of a faster back. I don't know if I can go for a running back this high, though, when we need so many things. Riviera looks pretty good. Daniel Riviera, wide receiver. You know, Thielen is not really the number one anymore. Speed's not great, but I do like the catching. The action traffic is pretty good. The release is a B. Uh, you know, he's got an A spec, B short. I mean, his deep rock kind of sucks. His awareness is really good, though. I would, I would kind of put him in the 70s, and that's really all I need from a wide receiver to potentially be long-term starter. But I do worry that he's not the guy. Uh, Hayward's obviously good. Uh, I mean, I'm not really sure what I want to do here. 
Uh, right end, Morton. You know, he could potentially be uh, edge of the future. Once again, we could also just argue, hey, wait on... Uh, you know, let's go to like 12, maybe 14. See if we can, you know, get something for that. And then uh, just take whoever's available if there's anyone there uh, between the wide receiver and the edge, hopefully. Um, but yeah, we could just wait till next season as well. And, you know, we might have another really high uh, draft pick this time actually belonging to us, which would be great. Uh, we'll pick 47 and 46. It's not really giving me what I want. That fifth round is a little bit better. So I'm going to go to 47. And we're probably going to skip a couple of picks. Hope that our guys are still there at 15. And, you know, we get to choose. But there's a chance. Strong safety Thomas looked pretty good. Safety's up there for us. But once again, not a need this season. So I kind of want to just draft positions that I do feel are like immediate needs. But that edge rusher is pretty good. So I would definitely take a chance on him just because of, you know, the 2Bs, pretty athletic, and it's hard to find edge rusher, and oh, I almost just skipped. Um, you know, just uh, finding that in the second round would be crazy value. I'm still debating on what I want to do here. I uh, I don't think there's a clear-cut great player that's like a 2-3 to three type. Um, it's, I, it's between the edge and the wide receiver. I just don't know, do I actually take edge or do I take the wide receiver? Wide receiver is a bigger need right now. Riviera, this is a risk. He's not the most athletic. I'm going to take Riviera. And he is hidden. And he's a little bit more athletic than I thought. I could live with that. Getting Mike Evans vibes for sure. Absolute W. We'll have to take a look at how good that edge rusher is. But I can live with that. Of course, we don't have a lot of draft picks. So, once again, as much as I have a ton of really good players... I mean, it's just the way it is. I just can't really deal with anything. Uh, day three for the running back, I'd probably be willing to take him early fourth. Uh, any other position, tight end is up there. Hopefully he's hidden if we end up getting him. God, there's so many good players. I can't really trade next year picks, though. I'm, like, really not sure what we're getting for this, but I need everything I can get, so I guess we'll move down to 79. Tight end is actually pretty up there. Maybe I should have just taken him. Back to 15, Devlin was one of our guys. I mean, we need a lot of players, but we just don't have the, the capital. So adding capital any way we can. Man, this is pain watching literally all of our players go. Oh my! This is insane! Like, literally all my players went. Now, once again, I don't know if I can even trade up much anyways, but like, we're down to like a few linemen. But obviously, Hayward, it's a really tough position to get. He looks athletic as hell. I mean, I'm kind of thinking star, superstar, hopefully. Oh, that sucks. He's really athletic and really good, but that does blow. I can't lie. I cannot lie. Uh, let's move on a little bit. We could use a linebacker still. Uh, please, just like, like not. Actually, Morgan What it might have been one of my linebackers. I would love to finish this out with... Man, all our DTs are gone with a lineman, Newberry, and like a linebacker. Maybe I trade for Newberry now because he's got to be going soon. And then we trade up when it's down to like one linebacker just so we at least have an option. But yeah, this team is not in a good spot. It really just isn't. It is a team that is not uh, with you know much capital. Let's move our fourth. Can we do like two-fifths there what does two-fifths this do where does that put us halfway do we do a fourth next year it might take both fifths and then some yeah those two-fifths are not really cooking the way i was hoping they would okay okay maybe we can finish this out with like a an actual player trade so we do have keaton so uh at the end of the day we don't really need that running back and we might still draft pyramid or pyramid if he's in a, a decent spot for us but this is going to be an offensive lineman. It'll at least add someone, so we'll realistically need at least one. Uh, Newberry looks really good, so obviously that's the guy I want. If he's not hidden, I would be genuinely shocked. And thankfully, I cannot afford to have bad draft picks. We really just can't. And thankfully, it works out. It just does. And I'd love to get more linemen. I'd love to get, you know, the running back, but... We're going to just have to let the board kind of decide for us. I don't remember any of the names, to be honest. I know that's one of them for sure. How many other guys do we have? Didn't get the safeties either. Uh, I would say Russell's better, so Farrell and Russell are our choices. And I'm really hoping that they just fall to six. I don't think they will. Oh, Spikes. Interesting. I thought he was on my list, too. Definitely seen his name. All right. 
I mean, we're still doing all right here. I mean, our linebackers are still here, and we're almost into the fourth round. I don't know if that's actually a good thing. Barbara is one of my names. Dunn goes. I mean, this is, this is all right. And there we go. So back to the Texans. All right, so uh, the tight end kind of pushed over what would have been like an extra six-round pick. But we end up trading a third next, a fifth this, and a sixth next for two pretty high picks from the fourth round. Obviously, you know, you're looking at our draft picks. A third round pick from us is basically almost a second, which is a lot for some fourth round picks, but we need talent, and those picks would be pretty massive, although I probably shouldn't have traded up for both. Uh, man, I don't know. We kind of... I might just trade up anyways again. I don't want to... I'm going to go Russell. I think running back, we can live with who we got, but Russell, we need a starting linebacker. Sadly, normal development trait. Uh, that kind of sucks. And then hopefully the running back's there at number five. Which, if he is, nice. We'll take him. And then we might actually trade down that fourth round pick, even though we just got it. I thought there was more players in there than there actually was, but Pierman, he looks pretty good. You know, not the most best trucking back guy, but really good break tackle and ball, ball carry vision. I'm expecting at least 75, 66 overall, and he does have hidden. I would say that almost guarantees him the start. All right, I'll see what we can get with this. If we got a third round next, that would be insane. Of course, the Ravens, they're going to give us that. Obviously, nowhere near as high of a pick projected as us. So, you know, that pick makes a little more sense for us. But we end up almost getting, you know, we probably lose about 20-some rounds. But we do get a third back. So, in theory, was totally worth it, I think. I mean, it works out for us anyways. Uh, and then we have one more possessions to get. I mean, I guess we go fullback. I think we had a fullback on our list of re-signings, and we just didn't re-sign him. And it looks to me that Ramon Smith is the best. 21 years old on top of it. Normal dev, but it is what it is. Pretty cut. You know, probably could have traded down to the seventh round, but it is what it is. Also, don't have our second round pick this upcoming year. We don't have our own third, but at least we uh, did get a third back. Here we go, draft recap. Only 10 mil left, but we did land a couple of potential starters. Overall, 75, 75, fair enough. 73, 71, 74, 69. So this wide receiver is a pretty big piece for us. Honestly, it probably gets to start with Mingo, even though Thielen was decent. He probably fits better in the slot, and I don't even know if he's here. He may have retired. This guy's actually pretty athletic for a, a big dude. Uh, change direction was like 90. Let's take a look at what that, uh, that dev is. Star Dev kind of expected it, but I will take it. Only number in the 80s is literally 80. Uh, number 17 looks pretty cool for a bigger wide receiver, so we'll take it. Uh, tight end, obviously normal Dev, but 75 overall, like the wide receiver. And really good. I mean, he is actually very good. Obviously, the traits aren't great, but injury does suck too. But, I mean, the route running is really good for a rookie. Catching's very viable. The run block at 67 I wonder where that puts him in the league. It's got to be up there. Uh, Newbury actually probably will be playing left guard. His run blocking, though, his finesse and power are terrible. But he's a little bit of a weird player because usually you have three ratings that are kind of bad. But he only has two. Uh, and he is star dev, which is not bad at all. Middle linebacker. Definitely a little disappointed that he wasn't hit in development trait. But what can you do? Although, another weird kind of player. I mean, that block shed zone coverage... I mean, pursuit and tackle with the awareness, I actually don't know why he's only a 71 overall. Like, am I missing something? It feels like he should be higher. Either way, Pierman, uh, you know, pretty uh, versatile back, but obviously that change direction kind of sucks. This is pretty much almost guaranteed to be star dev, but you never know. I've seen a couple of superstars. Number, kind of giving me Jonathan Stewart vibes. I'm going to go with number 28. And then the fullback, who cares about? And I think because we had a choice between the wide receiver and the right end, we kind of have no choice but to check the right end out. He went all the way at 19. Mr. Morton was hit in development trade, 73 overall. A little raw, I will say. Very strong, though, for a D end. He is 275, but still, that is very strong. And, oof, he is a superstar. Definitely disappointed that we couldn't do anything for the interior of the line. But that's just not the way the, the team went. You know, we kind of got offensive line heavy. And maybe uh, we trade for some, like, halfway proven DT. Maybe, like, a in-between, like, 26. Hasn't really shown much to his team. But, you know, a change of scenery maybe uh, reignites him. I'm not sure. But 
Our interior is still really bad. We didn't address it at all. Brazil was a guy we absolutely should have prioritized at the minimum. I mean, I came into this draft thinking I was going to grab two. Didn't even grab one. So and we're kind of scrambling here in the trade deadline to see if there's anyone here. And sadly, it does not look like it. So hopefully we still have someone halfway decent. All right, year two team, we kind of added more talent for uh, Bryce Young. He's got a more dynamic uh, tight end. He's got a big body wide receiver on the outside. He's got Thielen in the slot. Mingo has an, a high ceiling. Left guard, you know, long-term guy. And then he's got a kind of tanky running back who has a pretty high ceiling. So, I mean, different names. I don't know if I would say better, but definitely different. Uh, this defense, obviously, still has Luvu on the outside with Burns on the outside. Russell's the new middle linebacker, too. Woods is star dev. Really didn't do much for the defense, I'll be honest with you. But it is a 3-4 did we lose our defensive coordinator and we literally are back in a 4-3? Uh, because I did change to a 3-4. Uh, yeah, we're still, we're still here. I don't know what to do with this, because, like, they're the ones reaching out to me, but this is so unrealistically dumb. Why would they do this? Like, I just, I can't, dude. This is not realistic. I can't, I just can't. All right, J.C. Horn, uh, like we said, the contract is pretty fair, so we're going to do a full five-year deal worth $84 million. The money is pretty nice. I just don't know who we have to pay. Derek Brown, I mean, that's a contract we obviously will be taking on. A five-year 85 is not bad at all, considering some of the contracts we've seen. Dante Jackson, I think, might need to be replaced, but not just yet. A one-year 7.5. Maybe he's the number two. Maybe he's the number three next year, but at least we uh, have an option. Corbett used to be a higher overall, not really anymore. Thompson, I would like to keep another year, one year 11. Glad to keep him. I love a loyal dude. He is that dude. He is him. Uh, and the rest are kind of backups. Aquanu probably gets that contract. It's going to cost a lot no matter what. And uh, 18 mil is going to be less than what he's asking for, I imagine. Maybe we don't. I don't know. He's re-signed green, and I don't want him to go, for, go to re-sign red or something after another season, so... We'll, uh, we'll make the decision on it. Terrace Marshall just he never really developed. He's 24 now, and he's like the number three slash four on the team at best going forward. Uh, and then Luvu, I don't know how he's playing. If he's killing it, I'll, I'll keep him on. I will, but one sack through half the season is pretty bad. If we win or the Falcons lose, we're actually in the playoffs, and I don't know what to do because I ran... The Panthers playbook all season, actually, on offense. But the last three games, I had Buccaneers because we had a wide receiver breakout for Riviera. I tried to knock that out. Couldn't do it. I don't know what to do now. Do I go back? We won the last three games. Who are they against, at least? I mean, two teams not really that tough. But beating the Cowboys? I mean, I feel like I'm just going to stick it out with the Panthers. Uh, not the Panthers. The Buccaneers playbook on offense. Uh, let's take a look at the stats, though. I can't imagine they're going to be good, though, because, once again, we were on the Panthers for the majority of the year. Rice Young, yards are okay. Touchdowns are pretty low. Picks are at least low. Um, Pierman, you know, he got to 1,000 yards. Just yards per carry aren't great. Uh, Riviera was pretty good. Mingo was pretty good. Hayward was pretty good. Could go to Star. Hopefully he does. Thielen kind of, you know, not the best, but he is the slot wide receiver now. Less of a role. A little bit less uh, punishment on the old man. Russell with 115 tackles. Burns, uh, 8.5. Luvu, 7.5. Brown with 6. Got to say, the Luvu with one sack around week 11 or 12. Finishing with 7.5 is a pretty good strong finish. Dante Jackson with that one year 7.5 is probably going to be a superstar. Doesn't really change much for me, but at least, you know, if we decide to keep him on even longer as like a, a number 3 perhaps going forward, the option's there because his dev uh, will save him a bit more. MVP goes to Burrow. Rookie of the year does go to Riviera. Almost Pearman or Pierman. I think I want Riviera more, though, because there could be better running backs in free agency, and maybe that's where the route we go. Uh, but we're wide receiver. It's going to be really hard to find those. Uh, any other award wins? Probably not. And no. But playoffs in year two. I mean, we've had teams that are way better than this that don't get their playoffs till year three or four or later. And you know what? The Giants, you just never know. We actually may even win a playoff game. So here we are. In a playoff game in year two. I'll take it. Going to the end of the game. Giants do score three. We get nothing. They do score three again. We get nothing. They score nothing. We get nothing. We score nothing. They get nothing. Seven to six, though, at halftime. 14 to six now, and they get a field goal. Touchdown could win it. One touchdown could win it. I mean, just one touchdown is all I ask for. 
And they get a short throw, and with the clock rolling, I mean, let's see what the clock is situated at. Uh, why wouldn't we be playing, like, prevent here? Am I crazy? Where's the... What am I looking for? Three man deep? And the clock's running. Yeah, why wouldn't we be? And they're going to get the ball off. It's going to be under... The, he has a chance at this. Perfectly swatted by McCain. And we're going to win a super low scoring close one. 14-9. and nine, And be headed to the divisional round. Okay, Carolina. I see you. I see you. Oh my... Do you see his face? <laughs> the trainer, dude, he always has the memes going on. I don't know what that was, but he had his mouth open like he was like in the grudge. Bryce Young, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, yards are low, but at least he didn't, you know, he's played efficiently. Uh, rushing, Pierman, not bad. You know, better than Barkley, kind of, technically. Uh, looking at the receivers, Riviera was pretty good. This young man's squad with new direction, maybe not so bad. Blocked field goal, which doesn't help, but a win is a win. We're moving on to the divisional round. All right, divisional round. Who knows? Year two Super Bowl could be going for a dynasty. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe not, but we'll see. I mean, why not? Panthers versus Eagles. I mean, I would bet on a Panther to beat a Eagle out in the wild, I suppose. Although this is more like if an Eagle had like missile launchers and miniguns attached to it, but still doable. Going to the end of the game. Philadelphia not scoring anything. We don't score anything either. 7-0, they're already uh, on par to pass that number that we just gave up last week. 14-3. I mean, you can't deny the, you know, the defense. They've cooked. They have cooked in this postseason. They have given this offense chances to win games. But can the offense clutch up when they need it the most? And with one second left... From the two, I don't know if the clock's running. I would guess it is not. Uh, we're going to run double drags. Okay, 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 okay. This is kind of kind of scary. And no way. Oh, Hurst with a catch! And I think you go for this. I don't know. Yeah, I would agree with this. RPO bubble alert. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Riviera's a big guy. I don't like it. I don't like it. The running back, Pierman, to the championship round. The defense is insane. The offense clutches up. And the, the I don't know, the underdog kids. I don't know what kind of kids these are. I've never seen them in my life. Get them out of my yard. They're continuing to move. The defense is locking quarterbacks down. Unbelievable. Um, Pierman was terrible, but he came up with two touchdowns. Well, touchdown and two point. Uh, Mingo, pretty good here. Riviera, not bad. Pierman, uh, not bad at all. Uh, you know, just didn't really run the ball that well. But defense was just on point. They they were just perfect. And of all the teams to beat, Philly being one of them is not something I had on my bingo card. I had Dallas, who is even harder to beat in game. Speaking of, is that going to be who we face? I don't know, but I want to take a look at some of these uh, upgrades. Uh, this is pretty balanced, so we're going to go with slot. Slot upgrade is obviously the best for cornerbacks. Uh, speed upgrade proves it right there. Man in his zone doesn't hurt either. Mingo, what are his weaknesses? I'm definitely not going to go with the deep threat because that's like what they're going to upgrade on him anyways. I think physical or slots. So I'm going to go physical, give it a go, see what we're cooking with. Hopefully short and medium. Uh, okay, short round and release, which is really good, too. We needed that. Hayden Hurst, though. Talk about a guy cooking up. You ain't gonna forget about that one. I mean, he clutched up. It was it was a pretty good bait by the linebacker, and Hurst just caught it anyways. I mean, just clutched up. The Niners, not an easy win, but let's take a look at this, uh, this schedule. See, uh, you know, did they have the bye week? They are pretty high, so it would make sense. But uh, winning by one clutched up. The Niners barely beaten Seattle. I mean, this, it's tough, but there's a chance. I just, I kind of worry about the AFC more than anyone, but obviously the Niners are uh, no joke either. We are eight overalls lower than them, which is even more of a drop-off than the Eagles. But if we beat the Eagles, we could probably beat the Niners. All right, can our defense continue their dominance? They did pretty well the start, and then short field by the Panthers' offense. I mean, that's safety. Like, you can't just be literally giving them points. 
Up five, though, at half. Um, once again, another short field. 20 to 15. Looks like we failed the two point. 14 uh, or four point lead. Fourth quarter. Let's see it. Fourth and six. Field goal. They're going to go for it and be short one. I mean, I like the aggressiveness. Did get the stop. Offense moving. Offense moving. And we're up by three. Three minutes left. The defense holds. And we're headed to the Super Bowl. Wow. I mean, this is different playbooks. I have not run the Buccaneers playbook on offense all mad and long. The run game is terrible, as you would expect. But we are running the ball. It's just not going well. 10 for 12. 17 for 36. I mean, 30 rushes plus on the game. I mean, you can't ask for many more attempts than that. Feeling clutching up. Maybe gets a Super Bowl ring. I mean, I think Vikings fans would be pretty happy if he was able to win a Super Bowl with Carolina. So uh, let's see if we can do that for uh, him and them, I guess. That's, I mean, this is this is one of our crazier ones. Obviously, we kind of need to do the whole thing, though. We kind of need to finish it out. It doesn't really mean a whole lot until we actually win a Super Bowl. This is one of those ones where it's like, you just don't know with Sim. You have one of those 90-plus overall teams that can't beat an 83 but then you have a, you know, you have a sim set like this where you're just beating everyone, not by much, but by enough. But I do have to admit, the Chiefs are kind of a different breed. Uh, let's see who they actually had to beat and what those scores were. I think we looked at them and it seemed like uh, they were putting up some numbers. Uh, they did not have to play in the wild card. Who would have thought? Smoked the Browns, smoked the Bills. I don't know what to think about this one. I really don't. But let's uh, take a look if we have any dev ups. I don't know if we were expecting Riviera for sure. Maybe because of the yards, the running back. Maybe because of the yards, the tight end. We'll see. How lucky did we get, if at all lucky? Damn. Not lucky really at all. Riviera obviously was guaranteed, or Rivera, whatever you want to call him. Uh, cornerback, Don, you know, Dante Jackson expected. Middle linebacker, Dink Up and Dev. I mean, it's better than nothing, obviously, but uh, was hoping for a little bit more. Can't lie. Just a little bit. And obviously, we're going to be going deep threat because he is really good at short and release. Which is not bad. Those are things you want. But obviously the AI is going to be upgrading for the rest. So, you know, kind of go with the uh, the schemes that he's not going to really be developing on his own much. So uh, there's that. And uh, very good catching. So dependable. Huge. Decently fast. This is a super underdog story. And can we beat the, what we would call, like, the man. The corporate guys. The guys on top. That's basically what the Chiefs are in rebuilds. Like, don't get me wrong. The, the offense has done its part. But the defense is just so far... Without a doubt, the winners. They are killing it in the playoffs. 14 to 7, 21 to 7, not bad. 20, 35 to 7 and a half. This is hands down the most unexpected rebuild I've ever had. And we have won the Super Bowl year two with the Panthers. I actually don't know what to tell you. I really don't. And it's not like, oh, you know, you ran the P the Buccaneers playbook and uh, you're putting up crazy passing yards because of it. The numbers on offense have been pretty tame. This game, maybe not, because obviously we've seen that score get up pretty high. But the numbers have been really tame, really average numbers at best for quarterback. And yet this team managed to win the Super Bowl with a team that is just really still developing. I mean, there's, we don't even have all of our positions for the future set. But obviously, we're going to be playing for the Dynasty. This will be a four-year max Super Bowl as that extra year, the fifth, doesn't really matter to me because I want to win those two out of three. The Super Bowls, two out of three Super Bowls. I mean, don't get me wrong. Two out of four is pretty cool, but two out of three is that true history dynasty level. And uh, that's what we're aiming for is Bryce Young is holding a Lombardi in year three. Actually, no, year two as a pro. Sophomore year. One of the younger Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. Uh, this one's still pretty tame yards, but really efficient. Great touchdowns. Interceptions are zero. Mahomes, obviously the yards are a lot better than the ones we were playing before. The games before then, touchdowns are up. But the two interceptions is still a lot. Still a lot to force Mahomes to. Pierman was okay. Nothing crazy. Mingo was very good yet again. Feeling was clutch. I mean, he can retire happy now, I think. Uh, defensively, sack totals. I mean, some numbers. Better than their numbers for sure. Two interceptions. One for Chin, one for Horn. The DB's cooking. Uh, hitting all the field goal, well, extra points. And we won a Super Bowl year two against the Chiefs. Like, the teams we had to beat were no easy teams. The first one, yeah, sure, the Giants. But the Eagles, the Niners, then the Chiefs. This was no cupcake Mickey Mouse Super Bowl. The Panthers did what is very rare for me 
in Super Bowl or in franchises and rebuilds. And as an 82 overall, they have won a Super Bowl 42 to 24. That defense cooked. The offense did their part, obviously, and you know they they made their opportunities count. Let's, I mean, no, that's a little bit too crazy for my liking. Let's move on and see who we're looking at. I mean, Thielen just won a Super Bowl. Is that him? Is that is that the end of his uh, NFL career? It is not. He is still here, and I mean, I'm pretty happy with our wide receiver group right now. They're developing, and you know, Thielen's a fun little number three. So. Uh, he is still legitimately around. I mean, unless we have to re-sign him, we can't afford him. I mean, I'm down. I'm down. I think we re-signed everyone we needed to, right? There might be like a fifth-year option or maybe like a fullback punter, kicker, what kind of stuff. But the main guys, right? Uh, I'm still thinking, I think because the re-sign interest is high, I just re-signed him straight up. We did just win a Super Bowl with Luvu. 84 finesse. I mean, if I can cook like a two-year deal up here, that would be a little bit better for mine. Like in a two-year 35, I think is perfectly fair for him. Tag, what's that tag ask? 26 million. Hmm. That is quite a bit of money. Corbett, he's a lot better than his overall states. What did he do for sacks? He only gave up two. I mean, I think you got to resign the guys that are playing well. I mean, normally I'm on team, like you got to get the highest overall. That's the best way to win in sim, but... This team is kind of showing me like, hey, if the numbers say they're good, keep them around. They're they're good, simply put. Pinero was not great in the regular season, but he was pretty good in the postseason, if I'm not mistaken. Nah, he's pretty good in the regular season. First year I'm thinking of is where he was bad. I mean, I'll keep him around. Eddie Pinero, why not? It worked out for us, so screw it. Uh, we're going to re-sign Ekwanu next season. I think just got to let Luvu go, which it definitely hurts me to my core. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna tag him. I'm gonna tag him. I mean we're just not gonna give him in free agency. Maybe there's someone there in free agency that's better than him. I just can't guarantee that. It's lately it's just not been the case. It's been nothing but bums. Best case is like Josh Allen. You know, that's really all you see watching be like Aiden Hutchinson and some other guy. Nick Chubb is interesting. Hufanga's interesting. Ayuk is really okay, so I will say this is hands down the most insane free agency group I have ever seen. I mean, I have never seen this level of talent. I mean, Zedarius, I suppose, would be your guy, but five guys offering or five teams offering, and, you know, that locker room presence is a question mark, but 32 mil is not a great amount of money to have when you have this level of free agency. This is a really good group. So there are a couple of guys you can get rid of. Hurst was so good in the Super Bowl for, with that touchdown catch. Well, not in the Super Bowl, the playoffs, that touchdown catch. I got to keep him just for that alone. But I am going to get rid of Bozeman. I'm going to get rid of uh, Tuttle, and I'm probably going to be getting rid of Mr. Von Bell. Uh, we really don't need wide receiver. I could use a safety, but the crazy asking price is just insane. 17 mil, 20 mil. I mean... That is a lot for some safeties. Linebacker, though, am I willing? You know, joke. We have Thompson for this one extra season here, but we could use him in a linebacker for the future. I mean, we could even sit uh, Russell's. I mean, I don't even know if he's really that great. I don't even know if he's going to be the future of the position. Don't really like paying linemen, I will admit. But maybe, maybe, maybe just one. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe just one. Maybe one lineman. Joke, I think, is probably worth it, though. So we're going to we're gonna pay him a four-year... I'm going to try to get him to green, basically. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, I would like a guy like Newsom. We've done that a couple of times, though. And our cornerback group isn't terrible. Uh, any other positions? I mean, Deion Dawkins wouldn't hurt. Tackles, I'm trying to think. Tackles are good enough for now. Yeah, I mean, that's those are probably the two big-ticket items at this point. All right, surprisingly, it was actually Joke that uh, signed right out the gate, which I'm a little surprised by, but... Quinn Miners is uh, still there, and we get him as well. So definitely a bit of a costly one, but an 86 and an 85 overall with neither of them being over 26 is pretty good. All right, it's draft time. Obviously, we don't have that second round pick. We have the 32nd pick in the first round. Who would have thought we were drafting this late uh, in year two? I mean, well, technically year three. I don't know what freaking year you want to call this, but I guess I'll take a look at some players because we, we did throw a couple of one to twos on there. Uh, and they're all gone. Sweet. Love it. Um, <laughs> what kind of glitch that is. Uh, didn't go with Andrew Hill, even though he, you know, had potential to be really good. We just need too many players to be taking a one to two, but I thought maybe I'd look at a few just in case, but I'd be a little bit more likely to take someone like Whitmore. I kind of need two DTs. 
Glenn and Whitmore, maybe? I, I don't know. Uh, it's obviously going to require a trade down. But right now, we have just uh, Derek Brown. And I don't know what to think. Of course, really solid-looking corner, which we could use. This might be another draft where we kind of reach a little bit. We need a cornerback. Not as bad. But we do need a safety 100%. And we need two DTs. So uh, this will be a trade down to like 15, I think. And then we might have to make a couple of trade-ups. I mean, the Eagles are giving me a pretty good trade. It's a late fourth, but I mean, it is all this year and we're only moving back four spots. So I'm absolutely down to do that. And uh, I'm kind of curious to see what the Eagles do. They get the fifth year option as well. And okay, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Say what you want about, oh, it's an unrealistic trade. You know, you're gaining too much or whatever. Who would trade up for four spots? Getting that fifth round uh, or that fifth year option for a running back might be the most valuable position to be getting that at other than quarterback. So, I mean, that's pretty impressive, you know, for them to make that trade up for that running back spot. You know, they actually made the trade that makes sense. And there is literally nobody that's willing to do same round, except for the troll. Uh, 48 is a bit of a drop off, but I need every draft pick I can get. Two fourth round picks maybe gets me a high third, perhaps. So uh, I'm willing to move down a little bit. I don't want to lose some of these players, but I don't know if we have much of a choice. I, I might have to just go until we're down to like, well, not down to, but until one of the players goes. And then I'm like, okay, I got to just start making crazy trade-ups. Don't know what it's going to take to get here, but so far so good, I think. I mean, maybe there's some player that I'm just completely forgetting about and they already went. Two picks away, one more pick away, and I don't know who to take. Whitmore, I think you can get early third, so we're cooking there. We're fine. Glenn, though, you probably need right now. But you also do have Boyd and Staley, who don't look great, but they're at least options. Whereas Batch, the corners kind of just completely fall off after that. So I think I'm going to go PJ Batch here, who looks pretty decent. The speed's not great, but the B-man, the B-press, the B-catch, and the A to C zone, I think he's got to be good. And he is hidden. Okay, that's good. He's our new number two, uh, I think. I don't know. It will depend on the uh, overall. I don't know what to do here, dude. I really don't know what to do. I need a safety as well. Glenn goes. Okay. I mean, I think it's just a case of not having enough capital. So I think here we trade up to the Giants to grab a safety. What will that cost us, though, is a great question. Maybe we have a player. Do we have any players that the Giants would want? Quarterback, right guard. Strong safety. I think we kind of released uh, Von Bell before this uh, free agency started. Jamie Robinson, a second next, a fifth this? They're broke. Okay. Um, give me someone worth more. That's uh, crap. There you go, Will Greer. There you go. That's That should go. And it does. Nice. So we get our pick. We do lose a second next year, but we're still getting, you know, we're getting a second this year, so it doesn't really matter. And with this pick, I think it's going to be the safety. We do need DT, but I think we can trade up to the early third for that. We're going to probably lose Boyd or Staley. But I'm I'm kind of cooking here if we get a decent... Please be a good safety. That's all I can ask for. He's tiny, but he's like the only guy with any decent zone. And he is hidden. That is massive for how unathletic he is. Well, I can't say that. His speed sucks, without a doubt. But the jumping and change of direction for a safety is not common. But obviously, he's 5'9 and he's slow, so... It is what it is. I'm kind of hoping that Boyd and Staley just kind of sit around for a while. I mean, if they got to the third, that would be very good. Oh, no, I don't know if I want this. We can probably sign some random, like, nose tackle, perhaps. Whitmore, obviously, we grab. Staley, though. 22, I don't know a lot about him. Very strong. Oh, that strength gets me thinking. That strength gets me thinking I might take the risk. I might. I don't know how I get to this spot, though. So I think what I need to do is trade to Chicago. I want to make sure I at least get to that early third. That that matters the most to me. Oh, they don't even have that pick. Well, they have that pick, but you know what I mean. They don't have the the early. I think the Buccaneers, 66, nod to the Buccaneers because they uh, they hooked us up. Two fourths, they're pretty late fourths. Two fourths, a seventh, and a fifth next year. The seventh, obviously, is this year. Damn, this is not moving the way I was hoping it would. But, I mean, I, I understand it. I do understand it. Uh, I'll offer some more sevens. I really want to keep that third. Okay, I mean, we're still we're still cooking. I might have to just lose Staley, but I don't want to. Future six. We are giving him a lot of, like, quantity. 
But obviously, we're, we're not giving the quality as much. But that's still a really good trade for them. Uh, I think you just have to let Staley go and just find a random nose tackle. But if he's there at two, I got to make a play. I think I got to make a play. Try to get double back-to-backs. Watch, here he goes. Brian Edwards, what a name. And we're one off. And they're both there. All right. Hmm. What do we do? I really... I'm going to grab Whitmore, I think. And then, you know, I'd rather have Whitmore. And there's why. And then if I can't get Staley, I can live with it, right? I think Whitmore was like... Almost as clear-cut of a, a good-looking player as possible. Let's see if we can finish off this this trade set. I mean, I don't think they're going to like it. Reaching into the future once again. Not my most proud work, but here is the trade. Moved up about 20 spots. Please, Staley, be worth it, because we are foregoing the offensive line position, which we can afford for another season or two, but I would have preferred not to. Uh, UDFA uh, Speed Demon, maybe we go to the sixth round. If he's there, we make some sort of like cheap trade, but... David Staley, don't know a lot about him, but I do know he's very athletic, and he has a B block shed, so I'm hoping for the best. And he's hidden. We cooked. We cooked this draft. We did the things. This was a very good draft. Coming off of a Super Bowl win as well, and while we did cost ourselves some earlier, uh, you know, some future stuff, like we, uh, you know, this, this team's kind of has... We've done a really good job with those picks, and we didn't cost ourselves that much. Maybe cost ourselves an early, you know, a second or a third here or there, but still have those first-round picks, and sadly, the uh, the Speed Demons are gone. Conway looks kind of decent for a 2-3, to three, though. Yeah. And to the end of the draft, we got to see these overalls. Uh, they were all hidden, actually, weren't they? We landed nothing but hiddens. We did well. 74, 74, 73, 75. Overalls aren't the best, but... That's what happens when you're drafting outside the first round. P.J. Batch, really good. Uh, could be a superstar steal. Either way, I think there's a good chance he's going to be cornerback too, just because the upside's there. And sadly, only star, but still, I like it. Uh, Warwick, going to be playing him at free safety. 74 overall, 80 zone. I mean, once again, quote-unquote can't judge a book by his cover, because obviously he's, he's a little bit shorter. He's a little bit lower on the speed. There's no way I would draft him in a user league, but in a rebuild, I don't really care too much about some of that stuff. Dev? Man, I, I kind of feel like with that lacking of size, maybe he should have been a little bit better in the uh, the dev department. Uh, I think Whitmore is going to be what, what was the it's 82 finesse, not bad. I think Whitmore is going to be left end, and even though the, you know Staley's not the biggest guy, he is strong, so it makes sense that he would potentially be playing that nose tackle role. I suppose the one time we need nose tackles and there's nowhere to be found, uh, and then Staley, the final guy, 75 overall. Not the best, but strong. Definitely strong. I mean, he's not terrible. He's just not as good as Whitmore, I suppose. And star devs. So all star devs, but all... I should have changed that DT number, but uh, all high potential guys, I suppose. Once again, no second round pick. Drafting at 32. We did about as well as you can ask for. Season 3 coming off of a Super Bowl win, an unexpected one. And this is what the team looks like. We didn't change a whole lot, but it's an okay squad. Uh, Joke looking pretty good as an 85 overall. Russell probably needs to be replaced. Luvu, I mean, we're kind of just bandaging every single time with him. But I will say, we did finally address the defense, especially those DTs or the interior spot. Derek Brown probably makes more sense to play DT, but we're going to just let it happen as it is right now and potentially go back-to-back. -back. 82 overall, so a bit of a lower overall, but that's how we got our uh, our our Super Bowl run. You know, we were the lowest overall team. Uh, I don't remember. I think even the Giants might have been a higher overall than us, which is saying something. All right, 151 million. Obviously, Aquani we talked about. You know, he's a guy that we're obviously going to be keeping. I'm not going to offer him any more than that. I think that's going to go, and it does... Uh, Dante Jackson we talked about because he's superstar probably sticks around a little bit longer than we expected so another season there Luvu I think at this point you either have to long term sign him or just not keep him anymore because there's no way he would continue to play on the tag um, he's playing alright is he really worth the money that he's asking for though especially since it's red interest and it's going to cost even more Probably not. I'd be willing to once again try a two-year, but it's just, like, not going to happen. We might just need a new edge rusher. Here we go to the playoffs. A little bit of a choke near the end of the season, but still 11-6. and six, Pretty good stuff to get to the playoffs. And uh, what was our season last year? I don't know, but kind of sold near the end. 
there. Uh, I think we had a pretty good start on last season, and then we kind of slowed down. And I was like, okay, we got to change the playbooks. And we went with the Buccaneers and haven't looked back since. I was always told the Buccaneers give you insane offensive numbers, for especially for passing. Not really seeing it here, right? Pierman, though, I will say... You know, the yards per carry is still pretty low, but this is still much better than I would normally see from a non-developed or non-real-life name. Receivers, Mingo is pretty good. I mean, Rivera, or Rivera and Thielen were all right. Hayward's okay, but nothing like too truly elite uh, blocking. A little disappointing, but Moten, I gave him the two-year 34 because he's just not allowing sacks, and that's rare for a tackle and Sim. 14 and a half sacks or burns could go to X Factor if he's not already, which I don't think he is. Luva at nine could go to Superstar. I don't know if that's going to change much. Brown at eight and a half is pretty good from an interior guy, and then the rookies are obviously pretty rough. Interceptions were super low. Kicking from Pinero, I told you we were going to have him cook, and he has cooked. Very good numbers yet again. Yearly awards, MVP goes to Mahomes, and I'm trying to think what we would have won. What about running back? How close? Yeah, number four. Okay, we get some other players injured, and we're, uh, ooh, Dev up, potentially. Uh, and we're in the Pro Bowl with that running back. Maybe they get some Dev up on for you know, but not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, but the Lions, 85 overall for them. We are an 86, so we're actually kind of, like, comparable. Normally, we are comparable to, well, the ground. <laughs> but we made the Super Bowl last year and won it. So even though our overall was low, our heart was high. It, it was a deformity, okay? 17-all. I mean, this offense is getting all the opportunities. They're so close. They finally punch it in. The Lions do not have enough time. And we do win this game. 24-17, to 20, uh, to 17 anyways. Uh, very bad game passing. But the efficiency was there both sides. Just not a lot of scoring, and the yards were kind of low. Gibbs had a pretty big run, but overall, Pierman was pretty good. I don't, I can live with that. If he runs like that if all time, in, but he never puts up any crazy like numbers, like five, six yards per carry, that's fine. That is all I ask for. Uh, and once again, Luvu, I wouldn't say he's a long shot, but you usually do see him hit free agency by now. I just, I don't know if I really want to move on from him. He's been good enough, and it's rare to have good enough at edge. That is a very tough position to develop, so... Good enough, might be good enough. Terrence Warwick, let's see what his upgrade is. One to zone coverage, now at 85 zone already. And then Derek uh, needs some power move upgrades. So we're going to go with power rusher, plus two, plus three. Which now puts him at 86 and 93. So maybe he should play DT, because he's also even a freaking block shedder over a power move guy. And he had a chance to go either way with it early on. But let's go to the division around this Panthers team literal DJ Khaled mode. They just, all they do is win. They cannot lose. The Falcons, same overall as us. Why not continue the streak? And of course, the Chiefs are still in it, as you would have expected. I well, Once again, maybe I'm going to speak too soon here and it's going to really backfire, but I have not seen a kind of quote-unquote non-deserved defense ever play as well as this team has played. I don't know what it is, but this Panthers defense is truly elite. I don't know what it is. They are cooking. Looking at the offense, very similar across the board. I mean, almost like mirror image. Pierman, once again, we talked about him. That is good enough for me. And hell, he led or tied in receive, uh, receptions. Not bad. He is him. He could actually be like him for once. Normally, especially the lower end, like running backs, did you get like, you know, the... The power backs with good, you know, good enough speed, good enough excel, but like no change of direction. They're usually guys that don't really develop ever, but this guy's okay. I mean, I can like kind of live with it. Of course, we're moving on to the championship round. Back, two back seasons. This is what? Four straight playoff wins. Obviously, the Eagles uh, were a team that kind of sparked that, that run. Beating them, you know, we felt like, hey, we actually have a chance. We maybe do belong here. It is the Bills in the Super Bowl. 7-0. Nice drive back for 7, though. And we just talked up the defense last game. I will say, though, the offense is keeping up. Three straight scoring drives for the Eagles, and it seems like three straight for us. I'm not going to give it to this offense. They're keeping up. For once, they need to be the ones to carry, and they're doing a pretty good job. They're doing a very good job. They get the touchdown, but maybe gave too much for the Philadelphia. Clock is draining, and we're headed back to the Super Bowl. 
This is strange. This reminds me of last year's Rams rebuild, I think we did. Bryce Young is really efficient right now, though. Not really incomplete in any passes, and Pierman is doing what he's got to do. Uh, Rivera, four touchdowns, one of the best receiving games in playoff history. Unbelievable. I mean, we're back-to-back -back Super Bowl uh, contenders here. Back-to-back -back Super Bowl visitors. Seven straight playoff victories in a row for this mid-level team. And I gotta say, Scrambler must be pretty good for throw powers because Bryce Young's in uh, 90 overall now. Obviously, the deep accuracy sucks, but medium's pretty good and short is, like, literally perfect. I mean, those are... that He looks pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with those ratings. Even if he's bad at, you know, deep accuracy, that's fine. You know, not many quarterbacks are great at deep anyways, so it's probably not even worth going for those ratings regardless. The Bills. The Bills. It was the Chiefs versus the Bills. I'd probably rather have this. We're the same overall. Any DevOps, I think maybe Mingo didn't get it. I didn't, you know, expect it, but maybe him, like I said. And then defensively, Burns, I think, to my knowledge, is the only guy that went up in Dev, which also, once again, expected. Uh, so there, there it is. Uh, all right. Chance at back-to-back, -back, and we'll still do the third, well, the fourth season, the third of that Dynasty run whether we win or lose. So could the Carolina Panthers be maybe our most successful realistic rebuild team ever? Just technically considering where they start from where they ended here. The Falcons could have played at home, but that is not going to be the case. Insta score a touchdown. We get one back, which is nice. We get a stop. Then we score a touchdown. They do get a touchdown. We are pretty equal up by seven with ball up by 14 is the Buccaneers offense. The play touchdown would win it. We have somehow won back-to-back -back Super Bowls as the Panthers, and we're only in year two and three? This is wild. I genuinely don't know how. Like, genuinely. Like, you could say, oh, it's because of the NFC, but we face some tough NFC teams, and of course, we have beaten the AFC team twice, because that's kind of how it works. And, I mean, we're, we're so used to this right now, we don't even really need to see it. We know what it looks like to hoist the Lombardi as a Panthers team right now. This team is going off two in a row, which is rare enough as is, let alone for a team that's not even a 90 overall. I mean, I could probably sim right now two 90 overall teams right out the gate, you know, when all the other teams are lower overalls, and we wouldn't win a Super Bowl maybe one time out of ten. Like, it's... It's really that tough, yet this team did it as underdogs. Even as the Super Bowl champions previous year, there would still be underdogs in this case. People would still be like, ah, fluke, fluke, and won both of them. Of course, Pierman not as good as before, but at least he didn't fumble like Cook did. Rivera has been really good. He is like, he's going next level at this point. Edge, Luvu was decent. I mean, why would I get rid of Luvu if this team, this formula is doing enough to win it all? And I'll show you guys the uh, the games played and all that. You know, no restarting or anything like that. I mean, it's just unbelievable. That is really unbelievable. New regime, who dis? Let's go on to the off season. Don't think we would have had anyone that would have like regressed super hard, but Luvu fifth year option really just is not in the cards because it's just like unrealistic as hell. Even if he's getting paid a fortune. But I also don't think a four-year deal, especially since he's about to be 29 here, is really the best be uh, bet when he's, uh, you know, sitting at star dev. I just think the ceiling's low. Bryce Young, at this point, it is worth the fifth year. It's going to cost that and more. Uh, and then Luvu, four-year 74. He's good. He is good. A two-year 40? Man, what's the tag? God dang it. What is that tag looking like, though? 25. I mean, it's... We can do it, right? It's it's right in our face. It's it's offering that to us, but it's just not realistic. Oh crap! I have to re-sign Pinero again. Have I only given him one-year deals? I thought I was giving him like two or threes, but it is what it is. I think I'm gonna let him go to free agency if he, you know, we have a chance to re-sign him. We'll do it, but I could also uh, go for someone else if I had to. Maybe a better proven name. Don't get me wrong. Nine sacks or whatever he had is pretty good, but he has been on the lower end. It's just we've won Super Bowls with him, so it's just like why break would works, but at the same time, I think the fifth-year option would be insanely unrealistic to do, what, back-to-back -back years now? Uh, Kittle being a free agent is kind of crazy. 
Phillips, I don't trust. I really don't. But at the same time, if you're going to be paying somebody a four-year near 80, you know, him or Luvu, I mean, I know which one. Ooh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, I'm willing to still do the two-year 40, even though his market is terrible. Two-year 42, I mean, his market's pretty garbage. I think most offers are going to be that or less. He's a decently uh, high overall, though. And then once again, we did lose our middle linebacker. So I would like to just grab someone proven just for this final season. Uh, Jermaine Pratt has the biggest dev or highest dev. He is pretty good in coverage. I think he's the most balanced. Maybe Cole Holcomb is. But I like the fact that he's a superstar. Obviously, that's going to always draw my eyes in no matter how old he is. Two-year 16, is that going to be the highest? It is tied for the highest. I worry... Because once again, it's the last year, so 78 mil, I mean, I can't really do much with that. It's, it's money that's just going to die if I don't spend it. And then, I don't know if they're paying Phillips full price, but let's just see what it looks like. If it's, like, full. Oh, nobody wants to pay him. Okay. Okay, I'm curious now. Let's see how well he's played. I mean, those are pretty mid-numbers, but so are Luvu's. What are the comparisons? Similar block shed. Pretty similar finesse. I think I'm just going to stick it out with Luvu and hope... Oh, Khalil Mack, though. Okay, so no one's offering a Khalil Mack, so worst-case scenario, that's who we go with. Even though he's kind of, like, on the real bad side lately, I think he'll still put up numbers because his name is what it is. We'll see if it actually is the case. Don't even know if they would have started him or if he was on a, you know, even on a team. But, you know, it's 10.5 before that, 5.5, you know, after that. So, I mean, once again, that's good enough if, you know, your last-ditch effort is him, so... I believe we're going to be skipping this and hoping we get somebody. And Luvu says no. Pratt also says no. Is there even any middle linebackers left? Could have maybe went Kittle, but I, I mean, I think we're kind of fine. Uh, I mean, Cole Holcomb was on my radar after that, so we'll go with Cole Holcomb. That should be that should be a freebie. Luvu want to join us and still doesn't. And does finally after the third set went... Two-year 42, which is okay for both sides, and Cole Holcomb a two-year like 15, which is good for both sides. Fair enough. And I'm not really sure what we can do with the draft, so maybe I do go a little crazy and trade for someone proven at a position we really need. Maybe it should have been edged now that I think about it, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if that's going to be something I do or not. O-line wouldn't hurt. We need a new lineman right guard. Perhaps that's the route we go. But overall, we're actually not in a bad spot. We just need a little bit more time to develop the cornerback spot, really. All right, so we're in for the final draft. i got to be honest with you. This seems like a pretty weak class. There's some pretty good uh, offensive linemen, I suppose, but there's not really much going on outside of that. Uh, so, I mean, it's pretty much all, all O-line, like I said. Linebacker, O-line. So we'll probably go for a linebacker. We'll go for an offensive lineman. And then maybe Sears. He looks raw, but he has an A-man, which means something. Amen. Uh, Humphrey, maybe. And, you know, we'll probably go a linebacker, running back. Maybe I'll actually go McDonald. We need a new wide receiver three. Yeah, screw it. I didn't even have the plans to do it. That's why I don't do it. Like, I swear, unless they're, like, clear-cut, obviously proven players, the wide receivers are just not a position you want to go for. It just never works out for me. We traded a billion things to get uh, from 32 to 1 in the third round. And I suppose with this choice, we'll probably end up going with an offensive lineman because we clearly need one. Uh, oh my, there's actually a pretty good couple of options here. I think Schultz looks the best right now, but he's 6'2". A little undersized, but I mean, he's listed at guard. I guess Richard Schultz is going to be the, the play. 21 years old, okay strength. Hit and dev, gotta love that blue. Dead blue. Apparently, this trade went Russell and Johnson for a mid third from the Lions. Wasn't even really intending that to go. I just kind of threw those on there to see if, okay, can we do a fourth or a fifth to, to make this go? And they straight up just took it, which I'm down for. Uh, I really like Humphrey as well, and we do need a backup. So Kerr is our final remaining linebacker, and he's pretty big. Okay, athleticism, just good enough. Going to be our guy. Normal dev. Love it. And then I don't know what it's going to cost to get to Seattle, but I'm going to try to trade with Seattle to get that running back and then call it a draft. And we really didn't have much to offer, so we ended up offering a third next and a fourth the following year to get to this spot to hopefully get Humphrey and, uh, you know, hopefully have ourselves a decent little bit of our running back committee. I mean, he looks really good. A, break tackle. B, uh, carrying, you know, pretty athletic. 
be stiff, be truck, but, you know, that's that's how we got the guy we just have. You know, Pierman, so maybe another Pierman. More athletic, I think, but normal dev, sadly. Here we go to the draft recap. Two Super Bowls in a row. Can't be wrong. We kept all of our original talent. And we added uh, Holcomb, which is, you know, basically a one-to-one -one trade for Shaq Thompson. Maybe we added someone else. I can't remember. Did we? I think it was just those two. So we basically just, like, equaled out. 75 for the wide receiver. 72, 73, 75. Normal overall. Uh, Dev with uh, 75 overall. He's not bad, but it does suck. It does suck. Uh, the guard is going to be playing right guard, so I guess we'll take a look at that Dev. What's his, like, ratings? Yeah, the run block's not great, but I've seen worse. So, once again, I've seen worse. Dev, maybe superstar, hopefully. Not going to be the case. Very rare. Very rare find. Quentin Kerr, obviously normal development trade. He'd be a future middle linebacker, but, I mean, even at that, he kind of has the fate of Russell, where he's, he's just trade fodder for the future, but... Number 52, uh, sure, I guess. Let's do that. Uh, a bunch of normal devs, sadly, but Greg Humphrey, pretty good, but just a backup, so it doesn't really matter. Here we are for the final season. Offense looks, you know, there's there's question marks, right? You know, the, uh, the O-line, especially right guard, is a little bit on the lower overall side, but the center's pretty good. Left tackle's really good, and uh, right tackle is playing like one of the best tackles in the league. Receivers, we got 285 overalls. It keeps shifting on who wants number one, who gets number two. Uh, but I don't really care whoever gets it. Just just do well. Uh, Pierman, he's 84 overall now. He's starting to develop. Young, 88 overall is great. The tight end, 81 overall. Would have loved to dev up by now, but that hasn't happened. Defensively, our overalls are climbing, for sure. The corners, you know, 90 overall for Horn. And, you know, Chin's in 84, 87 for Joke. And 94 for Burns, 89 for Brown. And Staley's in 80. And... I mean, we're moving, we're making moves, and we've won two Super Bowls in a row, so, uh, I mean, we're doing something right, It's I think. All right, uh, Mingo needs a contract. I think Jackson would be gone. Warren was just a one-year guy anyways, and... Uh, any contracts? No? Okay, so, I mean, we don't have a whole lot of money, but we also don't have really anyone to sign this season, unless I'm missing someone. Yeah, losing Jackson kind of sucks, but assuming we can afford Mingo, this is a really good steal for him anyways, so... We're looking pretty good. Oh, Staley's a superstar dev. I mean, that's a nice little boost for the final season. To the playoffs, a pretty damn good season. Not quite good enough for the bye week. Who had the bye week? The Cowboys yoinked it barely at 14-3. and three. Uh, I think I've seen another 10-win team in this division, right? All right, so we win the title of the division, and uh, we're 13-4. and four. Like I said, I, I really am shocked that this team is doing what it's doing. Playing that 3-4 role with the Pittsburgh defense. We have the Buccaneers offense. You know, normally if we're really struggling, we do something like the Chiefs or something. But the Buccaneers, unless it is something else, but I'm pretty sure it was the Buccaneers. Yeah, the Buccaneers offense really cooking. That's that's what we got going for ourselves. Uh, let's go take a look at the stats and awards. You know, we really haven't put any crazy numbers up, uh, as it will once again be the same case. Touchdown to pick ratio is amazing, obviously. But, you know, the yards are pretty low. Touchdowns are, I've seen higher, obviously. Pierman, four yards per carry of 14 touchdowns. My man's cooking, maybe even good enough for Superstar. Rivera, good enough potentially for X Factor. Mingo is pretty good. You know, the numbers aren't great, but the win-loss is, and that's really what it's all about. So, I mean, at the end of the day, if we're winning games, I'm not going to change anything up. Uh, Burns, 11.5. Luvu, 9. Staley, 8.5. Hey, out of nowhere. Brown with 5.5. Chin, 5. That could be Superstar. Joke, four, could be superstar. Horn could be superstar. Could be a big year for us. Pinera missed two out of four with block kicks. I'm not really going to say much about it. Kick return partner return game was basically non-existent. But yeah, I, I mean, we're finding ways to win, despite the fact that the numbers really aren't the best. I don't know if it is the defense, but it sure hell, you know, seems like that when we're actually in the game simming them. And as far as the actual award wins go, uh, Brian Burns wins one again, but... No one else. Of course, little surprise that we are playing in this game at 13 wins, but that's just the way things go. We're an 89 overall now, maybe even higher if we do these upgrades. And then we'll see if we can actually pull off the insane three-peat. It is not common for us to have that. I mean, of all the rebuilds we've done, maybe, you know, one or two or three, but as far as, like, realistic rebuilds go, unless the team was already proven, like, maybe one, perhaps... 
But uh, overall, we're, we have a chance to do it here with, of all the teams, the Carolina Panthers, who are probably a bottom five overall. And you've seen the starting roster. There's not a whole lot of cornerstone pieces here. The team just the team just surprised us all, really. Uh, let's see if we can win it. Again, 89 overall versus the Commanders, 86. And to the end of the game, 7-0, 7-7. Good defense, made the stop. Good offense, but no extra point. 13-7 still. Come on, offense. There you go, 16-7. Something. One more touchdown should do it, and that might do it. 24-14, and the defense will hold on just enough. 24-21. Once again, that's still a definite defensive win. Uh, their quarterback is a little bit better, but, man, the accuracy is from both sides. The Completion percentage is up through the roof. Rivera has been really good in the postseason. Decker gave up three sacks. Staley, Burns, and a half for Luvu. I'm not really sure how the left tackle gave up all those, but sure. Joke with an interception. Eddie Pinero got blocked on a field goal and extra point. Well, no, yeah, it was. Both were blocked. Okay, that's not good as that was four points off the board. We only won by three. If they would have scored a touchdown... You know, potential GG. All right, Pinero, you got to stop with these blocks. I mean, at this point, you get blocked four times in a season. It's it's probably because you're kicking it too low. I mean, I, I don't see how you get blocked four times in a season and it's not your fault because I would imagine they would have changed the, the snapper, the freaking holder, whatever they need to by then. Uh, the Niners, who were once upon a time the Goliaths that we did knock down, but now we're higher over than them by three. Going to the end of the game... 7-0, seven 7-7. To zero, seven to seven. Not going to get anything on that drive. Giving up a touchdown afterwards. 14-14. Fourteen to 14. Huge drive. We get three. Get a touchdown after half. One more touchdown. Should do it. And I think we're headed back to the championship round, actually. Because uh, I kind of forgot we didn't get the bye week. But this team is still just... It's amazing. I mean, what is the win streak of this raid? Probably... Not even probably. I think it would be guaranteed to be the greatest playoff win streak of all time, right? We're up to, what, 10 wins in a row now? I mean, that means two Super Bowl wins automatically. So that's already on its own, back-to-back. -back, very hard to do. And then to make it to the championship round in the third try for that 3 P chance is pretty absurd. Especially when both are through the wild card, obviously. Well, technically all three. We'll see if we actually win the Super Bowl. But championship round probably will be the Cowboys, which I don't, you know, I don't like. But the Vikings, 88 overall. Higher than I would have thought, but... Doable. Of all the teams to lose to, it would be very fitting for the one team we'd kind of expect to win against to actually beat us. Going for number 11, and of course the Chiefs winning by three. That is a tough team to beat. But will it even be us that has to try and beat them? I don't know. Second quarter, the Vikings are controlling the game pretty well. It's 7-3 to three still. Offense has a chance to do nothing with it. Second half, they get a field goal. We're down by four, and this could be it. This could be our rain gone. And they're going to get a touchdown, risking it on fourth down. Don't get the stop after third and 11. Oh, this is going to be a touchdown. Down by four, two minutes left. The offense has to clutch. The clock is draining. I'm not even worried about the fourth and inches. I'm worried about the clock here. I mean, I probably do run the ball here, but... This is this is kind of scary. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to predetermine the hell out of this uh, drag. And, oh, there goes Mingo. Nice stiff arm to the 26-yard line. And they got a timeout, but will they, you know, be smart with the clock? I don't know, but I'm going to give it back to them. I'm just going to give it back. The reins are back to the offense. They lose a bunch of... Where is the clock, EA? Why is the clock gone? This is actually insane. I mean, this is a lot to ask for, but sure. No way. No way! He's short to the three! The, the pressure made it where I had to throw it sooner than I wanted to. I seen that he was the most open. And we fall short to the three. The three-peat does not exist. And that is some real pain, as the team should have had time. And EA just said, nah, you're wasting 50 seconds in two plays with a timeout to use. We got to see this again. Uh, was there a better look with the clock? We probably could have hit the tight end. He's wide open. 
But at this point, I see that the tight end or the, the safety still has a chance to come back on this and sit mid. I was like, this wide receiver, this ball is good, which in fairness, because of the pressure, it was behind him. If this ball is led, he gets the touchdown. Is open, but unfortunately short. Did not have the angle. Obviously had a juke. It actually kind of worked, but the, the convoy came along. And the three-peat dream is in shambles. That was a hell of a game, though, right at the end. Uh, Pierman didn't really you know, show up too well. And those are the numbers. Unfortunately, we lose the game. Just not enough from the offense. The defense, once again, doing its part. But the offense fell short. And it's going to be the Vikings getting slaughtered by the Chiefs, probably, in the Super Bowl. But, hey, we'll see. We're rooting for the NFC. Why wouldn't we be? We obviously want the NFC to win because we're in the NFC. That's You know, they represent us. NFC versus AFC, NFC for life. Chiefs versus the Vikings. Let's see who ends up winning this one. I mean, surely it's got to be Chiefs, right? I mean, Mahomes is still there. That's really all they need. And it could be crazy. It will be a close one. But as expected, a Chiefs win. We will now take a look at potential dev ups and take a look at how the team developed in general. Rivera really doesn't go up in dev. That's surprising. Pierman not going up in dev is pretty surprising. Uh, and then defensively, Chin goes up and dead, but that was literally it. I thought maybe Horn would have gone up there. Joke, maybe. Not really great, though. But either way, two Super Bowls won. Another championship, you know, went to. Really disappointing pass block finesse from Aquano, but that's just the way the game develops. He went for the archetype, and it wasn't pass block, simply put. Uh, Hayward, a little disappointed that he didn't get a dev up, but he's still very good. 83 overall with great catching. Very athletic. You know, he's... Uh, I don't know who I would say he is. He's he's a fast player. That's decent at tight end. <laughs> that's that's really it. Rivera, a lot of boost. Deep route sucks, but this is how you want a player of his like style to be, right? Very good release, very good short medium route running, and the catching to be high. Mingo, uh, wow, he actually is really good. His spec catch sucks, but I mean with the release to go, short is a little low, but he is solid. He's actually really solid. Let's take a look at Pierman now, who is a, an 87 overall. Uh, very trucky. Speed and st uh, Excel are pretty good. I didn't actually change, look at change of direction, but it seemed to be pretty low still because he was been going power back, obviously. And then Bryce Young, the deep accuracy still sucks. Throw power didn't go any higher than 90, but very good under pressure, very good on the run, very good break sack, very good awareness. Play action's okay. Short's amazing, medium's amazing, and then deep is just a little low. Speed's obviously great, and the throw power at 90 is definitely usable. We now move on to the defensive side of things. I am curious to see Luvu, who probably did regress here, but nine sacks, back-to-back -back seasons. I mean, he was a guy that I did not expect to be the long-term edge, but here he is, right? Here he is. Joke, I mean, I've seen him as better, so I'm not even really sure why I'm seeing, you know, showing him, but almost always all coverage, zero run block, or uh, block shed anyways. Burns has an upgrade point, so we'll go with speed rusher, see if I can get to 99, I don't know. 96 overall. Don't know what his ratings even are, if he can even go higher. 96 finesse, insanely fast. Block shed's okay. Tackling all that stuff is obviously going to be pretty high. Uh, Warwick, 81 overall. Why not? He started off with pretty good zone. He just wasn't that fast. 88 zone coverage. That's pretty good, obviously. And then we got to look over at Chin, who probably will be pretty low in the coverage ratings because he's more of a higher overall than he is. Yeah, anything decent in coverage. Block shed's not even great either. I mean, he's really more of a name slash user at this point than an actual, like, guy you can develop into insane zone coverage and all that. Batch, he's an 83 overall. He was, you know, okay, but I was expecting a little bit more from him. Started him as a rookie. Didn't really, you know, have a big boom, but 83 overall, still pretty young is fair enough. 27 for Horn. You really need a dev up, but really good zone. Decent man. Pretty good press. Obviously, the athletic. It's kind of how that works. Derek Brown, the 90 overall now. Uh, 88 power move, 94 block shed. It probably would make more sense that he would go to nose tackle, but if the things are working, once again, why change it? Whitmore, 23 years old, but 77s uh, overall, but 89 finesse. So it's always crazy when those finesse interior guys just have so low of overall, but they can basically shed any block like nearly instantly. And we do have another run stopper, so maybe Staley makes sense over that spot as he's probably not going to be nowhere near the uh, pass rush ability. 79 power move is actually not bad. I thought it was going to be like 6 or plus, you know, difference. But it's actually uh, 
what a 79 83 yeah i mean four so it's uh he's, he's still pretty raw he's developing kind of slowly but that is going to be it for this rebuild if you guys enjoyed this one maybe leave a like subscribe if you're new uh if you're not new i really do appreciate your support on the channel i don't know when this was uploaded but some sort of video potentially tomorrow uh but if this was on the weekend then not tomorrow maybe spider-man then tomorrow anyways thanks for watching hopefully you come back for next video suggest me teams you want to see and or challenge rebuilds but until next video